All right, so what we want, two neutrons, two protons. This is going to make the alpha alpha particle, so two protons. Two neutrons. Down quark, down quark, up quark. I draw these upside down. Down. <laughs> up. Okay, the gluons. Remember, there's three. Three. And then from here you can go one, two, three, one, two, three. It's a strong force. Gluons. That black. Gluons, strong force. Alpha particle, this is helium. With the electrons, technically. So to keep all this in perspective here, you're going to have a little teeny electron out there, little teeny electron out there surrounding it. Low density, all the mass is going to be in the middle of this. This is what Ernest Rutherford was firing alpha particles at a sheet of gold. And what did he discover? All the mass of the gold atom was in the center of it. There we go, get more of that universe. So in the middle of these big stars, this is a galaxy here, but the red ones, when they get up to 100 million degrees, they're able to fuse three of these together. And what this makes is carbon. So you hear of carbon as being called carbon 12. Well, the 12 is three of these alpha particles. What you picture now, we use the alpha fishies. One, two, three alpha fishies. That's carbon 12. Add another alpha to it. Now you got oxygen 16. How about we do that? O16 would be four little fishies, two, three, four, and then one more that'll come along in this chain. All these will be in the stars as it's get compressing more. You can also make, I'll grab blue for this one, bigger neon 20. So the way we do that is we draw the little Alpha fishies. One, two, three, four times four is 16, so it must need five of them. This is what's called a star sequence. And again, this was where red stars, 100 million degrees. equals C, Cincinnati. I'm getting it? <laughs> a little tail on there, right? So isn't it cool? Even the C kind of looks like a little C star. So this is the next plate. So see again, red, the alpha particle, there's two blue neutrons, two red protons, so the alpha particle's got a plus two charge. 
Then what the stars do is they'll fuse three of those together to make carbon-12. Get the best resolution there. So if you know that right there, carbon 12, oxygen 16, neon 20, you've got the whole thing of the alpha particles. That's got the gluons, the quarks. It's all from the alpha particle. Take us another little breather here. I'm going to turn this off. So what we need to learn now, the elements. The stars have made the elements. The predominant themes on these are the carbon, nitrogen, oxygens. See how they're all right next to each other? It's the one I told you, carbon with an alpha particle to oxygen, alpha to neon. The reason neon won't react with anything is that it has eight electrons in the outer shell. It's two in the first shell, then it starts all over again. So what this does, if you remember, each electron added to that element, two, third electron is outside, starts a new shell. Three, four, five, six, seven, it turns out there's eight. So what happens is fluorine with seven, see the empty one, will bond with the groups in one, just like that. It's a picture of lithium fluoride. Lithium chloride. Got some shiny tape on the paper over there, I can tell here. Get over here. Sodium chloride. Everybody knows that. One to one. Picture that filling that. Sodium chloride, sodium bromide, sodium iodide, potassium bromide, potassium chloride, potassium fluoride. Your H's are in there too. So you got lithium hydride, sodium hydride, hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen chloride. See all the combinations? So these are where the electrons come into play. So being able to balance the equations is what the next technique I need you to know. Carbon is right in the middle with four. And carbon bonds to itself to make long chains. So we're going to show carbon. Wanting eight electrons will take four hydrogens. That's what methane is. Nitrogen will take three and keep a lone pair, so it still gets eight. But that's ammonia, NH3. Oxygen, two lone pairs. Two empty ones, 1H, 2H, H2O. Fluorine, because they all want to get that electron configuration of neon. So fluorine needs one, oxygen two, nitrogen three, carbon with four. So, great. 
What happened there? Oh, gosh. How did I kick that? What I want you to know here is, if you see a molecule like this, the only thing it could be is a triple bond. It's got to be three bonds between those carbons. It's called acetylene. Now what could also happen coming along here, say you had a nitrogen, my cover going, I'm hiding there, drop that. Get out of the way. So we need the nitrogen to cover this. Carbon. That would go. This is what cyanide is. Get that carbon off there. Nitrogen should actually be bigger. So to have that, that would be a triple bond between nitrogen and the carbon. Triple bond, lone pair of electrons, that's bonding on it. These are interstellar molecules, these are very important. Cyanide, if all you have are the hydrogens, which you end up with four bonds, naturally one of the H's is gone. So we'll do ammonia, NH3. Know why it's NH3? Because there's a lone pair of electrons to give it eight. I dropped the wrong one. Now, for carbon, however, put these on there somehow. These balloons are like three months old. I can't believe they held up that long. Gets what's called a tetrahedral shape to it. You gotta realize these hydrogens are all gonna spread themselves out in such a way that they are the furthest apart. That's what makes carbon so beautiful is the tetrahedral shape of it. So now I'm gonna show you how to draw some molecules here.